having just a few technical issues there. Um, thank you so much. We are very glad for today's presentation. And um, we will go ahead and get started if you guys are ready. Um, if you, I've seen many of you going ahead and um, adding your name and organization to that chat. We greatly um, appreciate that. Um, my name is Kim Mayo. I am with the DRCH SD Telehealth and Outreach Program Manager with the National Rural Health Resource Center. I'll be kicking things off and then I'll be turning it over to Suzanne Snyder to speak for a little bit and then a couple more of our work program managers from the consultation team and from our community care coordination team, Shannon Sari and Selena McCord. So we, we are um, here uh, representing the National Rural Health Resource Center, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to sustaining and improving rural health care. And we are the National Rural Health Resource Center, which is the TA Center for the Delta Region Community Health Systems Development Program. All right, we can move to the next slide. Um, diversity, equity, is, and inclusion is a very important piece of the center where we are working to build a culture where difference is valued. And you can learn more about um, our, this at our, um, on our website, and I'll be posting a link to these slides as well. We are very excited to um, announce a, the, our, our program, the Delta Region Community Health Systems Development Program is funded by the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy in collaboration with the Delta Regional Authority. And you'll be learning, you'll be hearing more from Susie and Snyder, who is from the um, Federal Office of Rural Health Policy. And Susie, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Um, and hey, everyone, I want to personally welcome y'all to this webinar today to learn more about the Delta program. I want to thank you for your interest and your time in joining us today. It really is a very unique opportunity with the resources and the intensive TA that folks receive as a participant. It's a big commitment that you'll hear, but um, really would encourage you to consider this opportunity or share it with those that you work with just because of the amount of support uh, and individualized attention that you receive from this program. So I wanted to speak a bit to eligibility and the application process. So when it comes to eligibility, eligible applicants for the Delta program include small rural hospitals, so both PPS facilities with approximately 100 beds and critical access hospitals, rural health clinics, and other healthcare organizations that are located in the 252 designated DRA counties and parishes are eligible. Um, this slide gives you a view of who we have served thus far, which is including graduates of the program and currently participating organizations. We typically bring on about 10 facilities every year in what we call cohorts to start the three-year cycle. Um, whoops. Can y'all still hear me okay and see me? Okay, sorry, Kim, I, your computer is talking to my computer now and <laughs> my computer is having issues. My apologies, folks. Um, so what I was mentioning is that we typically bring on about 10 facilities every year in what we call cohorts. And um, those cohorts work in the three year to four year cycle meaning that we're working with three cohorts at any given time or about 30 organizations. And so since 2017, we've served 54 organizations all together across all Delta, all eight Delta states, as you can see, which is including 25 critical access hospitals, uh, 20 PPS hospitals, six clinics, and three federally qualified health centers. I would just add that if you're unsure if your organization is eligible, then I'd really encourage you to reach out to the center and they can help clarify that status for you. So then if we go on to the next slide. If after today you feel ready to take the next step or you know folks who might be interested in this program and are interested in applying to become a, a participant, then folks can submit an application using the center's online application on their website. Um, Important to note is that applications are accepted on an open and rolling basis. So you can submit an application at any time in the year and your application will remain on file and eligible organizations are considered for future openings as well. And after your application is submitted, 
The center schedules a review call to kind of get to know the organization, answer any questions that you might have, and get a sense of where you're at right now to confirm that you can fully commit to all aspects of the program and to determine if this program is the best fit for you and your organization. So if you're interested, I'd really encourage you to apply, um, apply sooner rather than later so that you might be considered for our next cohort uh, beginning program activities this winter. And with that, I will pass it over to Shannon to give some more information on the program. Thank you, Suzanne. So the purpose of the Delta Region Community Health Systems Development Program, which you'll hear us refer to as Delta, our DRCHSD program, is to help providers develop a local continuum of care to really participate in and benefit from value-based care, prepare for population health, and sustain access to local health care services. Next slide, please. The Delta program is designed to work with inspired leadership to develop innovative collaborative efforts and having access to forward-thinking technical assistance, which you'll hear us refer to as TA to help rural healthcare organizations to continue that delivery of care in the face of overwhelming adversity. You all would work with our team and the best in the practice on how to improve your organization's financial, operational, and quality performance, utilize telehealth services, and now my computer is acting up as well, to improve patient access to services, really hone in on leadership development and workforce needs to prepare your organization for the future, build connections and create community infrastructure to advance your rural health care and develop your community care coordination plan, and really lean on us at the center for shared expertise, resources, and explore how organizations are successfully navigating the healthcare environment. Now, we always like to note that as a participant in the Delta program, organizations will need to be actively engaged in meeting all of those program goal areas, and that this program is not um, a la carte. Next slide, please. Participating organizations receive technical assistance in all program goal areas each year and throughout that three-year participation cycle. Now, I know that this slide can look a little overwhelming, but services are designed as a comprehensive approach to support system development and build knowledge gain to help teams sustain post-project gains. So in summary, Year one really focuses on assessments, planning, as well as development. Year two will target implementation of action plans, whereas year three concentrates on action plans, updates to provide leaders that roadmap for future next steps and ongoing implementation. Please note that system, uh, excuse me, services can be customized to meet communities where they are to best fit your organizational needs. Next slide, please. So over the three year participation cycle, hospitals receive nearly, <clears throat> excuse me, $300,000 in consultation services to improve financial performance as well as quality of care. There's a comprehensive financial, operational, and quality improvement project with Stroudwater Associates in the first year of the program. And then an in-depth revenue cycle and physician practice management improvement project with Forbes in the second year of the program. Direct coaching and targeted trainings provide thorough implementation technical assistance which enhances the adoption of best practices to increase operational efficiencies and improve financial position of the organization. So just to provide you with an example, 
entire county medical center in Missouri almost closed, but the Delta program assisted leaders in developing a financial turnaround strategy, which restructured the organization to keep the doors open and align services to better meet community needs. Now, quality is a hot topic right now, is connected to financial performance to help hospitals receive greater benefit from that value-based care and enhance reimbursement. Leaders receive assistance to improve care management and transitions of care, which helps with health equity planning. Another example is Pickneyville Community Hospital in Illinois, who improved patient provider communications by having a board member attend medical staff meetings. And now family members and caregivers are included in discharge planning. These best practice, practices improved patient compliance and reduced patient complaints and readmissions. So in summary, services are directed to assist leaders with developing a quality focused culture that, perform, uh, that promotes performance excellence. Next slide, please. Thank you. So data does suggest a positive relationship between employee engagement, customer satisfaction, and business outcomes. The Delta program provides various services to assist leaders to address those workforce needs, build staff morale and knowledge level, and enhance recruitment and retention of providers. Just to give you a couple more examples, going back to Pickneyville Community Hospital, which is a critical access hospital in Illinois. They were one of our cohort 2019 participants who graduated in September of 2022, who benefited from a clinical documentation integrity training for providers and completed a physician compensation assessment which was followed by a provider quality metric alignment project. The purpose was really to engage those providers in strategic initiatives and particularly target their ACO quality goals. Pickneyville also developed a multi-year provider recruitment plan, which resulted in the recruitment of one family practice physician and four nurse practitioners. One of our cohort 2021 participants, Hill Hospital of Sumter County, which is a prospective payment system hospital in Alabama, is currently receiving direct technical assistance with physician recruitment from the center team in conjunction with the 3Rnet and Delta Regional Authorities Delta Doctors Program. Strategy planning workshops have been held on a regular basis with the board of directors to help them gain a better understanding of the future of healthcare and develop strategic initiatives successfully to position their organization for the future. And on that note, I will pass it over to Selena. Thank you so much, Shannon. Hello, good morning. I am Selena McCord, the Community Program Manager with the Delta Program, and I will be covering the remaining slides. I wanna spend some time just highlighting another program goal area, which is to sustain a community care coordination plan. And this planning supports our leaders with developing a local stabilized system of care. It also improves transitions of care, patient experience and engagement, as well as providing satisfaction that impacts our organization's operations as well as their financial viability. Sustaining a community care coordination plan does involve intimately engaging the community to establish accountability for its health status and those health outcomes. I wanna highlight a few of our program services that support this particular goal area. One being the hiring of the community champion, which I'll cover in just a moment. Services also include facilitating in-person community events and action planning workshops with the healthcare organization members, as well as key community leaders. 
Other service areas include funding support for community outreach and educational activities, as well as implementation technical assistance for the action plans that are developed. I do want to highlight one of our hospitals, and I kind of took role here. I see we have some Mississippi folks. So I will share that um, a hospital in Mississippi, Tippa County Hospital, which is a critical access hospital in Raleigh, Mississippi. They were a part of our first cohort, worked with a program to develop a communication strategy to promote the opening of their new RHC, their rural health clinic. And as a result, the hospital grew their market share by two percentage points and was successful in reducing non-emergent ED visits. TIPA was also successful in improving their HCAP scores for patients who rated the hospital of nine or 10 increased by three percentage points. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, um, another program service area for community care coordination planning involves the community champion hiring and assistance. The champion is a critical component of the DOSA program approach for community care coordination. Each participating organizations receive $8,875 per program quarter to support the position. The champion can be hired on as a contracted or half-time employee of the hospital clinic or FQHC. As you can imagine by the name, the community champion serves as a liaison to support the healthcare organization's community engagement goals. They also facilitate the development of a sustainable community care coordination plan under leadership's direction. Other responsibilities are highlighted here. I won't read them all, but just to mention a few. Champions support um, fostering community relations, engaging the community in the planning process so that it can be sustainable, building those collaborative partnerships or even enhancing what's already there, promoting the services of the healthcare organization and then building patient and family loyalty. Center staff will provide professional development and one-on-one -on -one coaching to build and strengthen the champion's capacity for community care coordination planning. Next slide, please. Moving on to another program goal that involves expanding telehealth services. Our healthcare organizations receive a comprehensive assessment with turnkey services to help leaders implement and expand current telehealth services. Our services can be tailored to organizations' telehealth needs and support financial system enhancements as well. Since the program's inception, our healthcare organizations have received nearly $3.5 million to enhance telehealth equipment as well as those financial systems. The program has also assisted organizations with developing 36 new telehealth services and 18 telehealth expansions. Common telehealth service development projects could include chronic care management. We have um, worked with dermatology services, emergency department, home health, as well as remote monitoring, um, neurology, primary care, the list can go on and on. It really is based off of what comes out of those assessments and what is most needed at our healthcare organization. So again, just some success stories to highlight. I will take um, one from Urgent and Primary Care of Clarksdale Clinic, which is located in Clark Clarksdale, Mississippi, excuse me. They receive telehealth equipment and technical support and system selection as well as workflow and policies and procedures to help their leaders successfully launch a new telehealth services. The clinic is now providing primary care services to the county jail via telehealth as well. Next slide, please. There are a ton of different services, service areas um, that we do support through the DELSA program. 
Um, but one also involves working together with our leaders to um, host an annual summit. So the annual summit is purpose to highlight program success from participating sites. So we do like to take a pause and just celebrate all the work that is being accomplished with our healthcare organizations. The summit also fosters an opportunity to facilitate learning and professional development. And of course, there's networking and other peer-to-peer -peer sharing opportunities. The federal office as well as DRA representatives and center staff are present during the summit too, to help facilitate that networking. As you can see here on the slide, the program supports up to four members from each healthcare organization to attend. The champion and the CEO are required to attend. Throughout the program year, there are additional virtual trainings and webinars that are hosted based off of feedback from sites. Next slide, please. So this is a quick fact sheet that um, highlights um, additional successes. So since the program's inception in 2017, 70% of our hospitals and clinics have improved financial performance following the completion of the three-year participation cycle. We have had 54 organizations receive over 250 financial, operational, and quality improvement projects. There have been up to 41 new service lines and 22 service expansions resulting from our TA, our technical assistance. We have had over 45 employee engagement assessments, um, followed up by development services to support workforce and leadership. And then finally, just highlighting that um, support to the champion, over $900,000 has gone to support champion hiring. Next slide, please. So we can only share so much through, um, based off of our experience in working with our healthcare organizations, but this is an opportunity for you to hear from others that have participated. Mike, if you can play the video. I feel like our original mission was to make sick people better. And now we are looking at things with a different mindset. What can we do to keep you well? Some people believe that once they've been diagnosed with a condition, that they're just going to have to live with that condition and there's not much they can do about it, except for go to the doctor and be prescribed more medicine. This is What this is doing is hopefully leading them to a healthier lifestyle where they aren't so dependent on medication and that they can learn how to balance medication with healthy lifestyle choices. Our big focus is preventative services at this point, because if we can treat things and get them under control before they are a problem, it is so much easier to promote overall wellness and to I mean, longer lives for people um, versus if we're trying to respond to a problem that's already there. So transitional care and care coordination has really helped our patients and our community become healthier and more compliant in their chronic illnesses. And overall, that has changed a lot of what we see on the clinical side for admissions and visits. We've had uh, several months now where we've had no readmissions to our ER. So it's been a drastic change and I think mostly that is due to keeping in touch with the patient, giving them a resource that they can count on and just letting them know that there's somebody here if they need them. I think what the Delta program did was it brought me together with people I would have never worked with. Until we were brought together and identify those needs, we didn't know how we could work together. So I really think it just helped identify some of those common goals. The center kind of pushed and prodded to think outside of the box of those normal people who you would normally see at the table. And so we have to reach across those lines. It has to be partners that aren't the traditional partners because more people play a role in health than healthcare itself. We have local banks, presidents and vice presidents on our committee. Um, we have media people on our committee. 
I think you need all those personalities. I think in a small community, everyone has um, a different skill set and everybody has a different reach. And so I think it's important to pull all of those people together. The more leaders that you have and the more joint partners you can bring to the table, the further your ideas can go and the more that you can help the community. We have the same social and economic issues, housing, transportation issues among some of them. And if we work together, we can help create a county that can address all these better than one hospital trying to do it alone. So I'm from this community and it's important to me that my family and friends have the resources that they need, that they don't have to drive 30 minutes north or south to the nearest hospital. Um, they have everything that they need right here and they can be confident in the things that we have here. Our community members of DeCoin are definitely healthier because of the transitional care and the care coordination that we're providing at their hometown hospital. I feel like it is one of the best things that we can offer. It meets our mission and our vision and what we're working towards. We really just want a healthier population overall. So the communications toolkit was very essential for me um, in just starting the whole process of Community Champion because I needed help with that. I needed to know how to effectively reach out and get the response that I wanted. Honestly, Delta has taken me from, you know, this kind of scared, introverted person into a world of having to be more extroverted and having to really put myself out there and make my voice heard. I feel like I have that insight and I also have the tools, the communication tools, um, to help me along the way too. Anybody that's in healthcare knows that it's ever changing and there's always something new on the horizon. and that you need to change and adapt for. So the Delta program helped us grow financially to be more sustainable in those areas so that we can adapt in the future. The Delta program gives us a chance to kind of see those evaluations through and then the implementation and the assessments on the back end. That fresh set of eyes for us has been invaluable. The Delta team has been absolutely amazing throughout this whole process. The Delta program has helped us evolve absolutely. If other hospitals have a chance to take part in this, don't deny it. Take advantage of that. It's so amazing and there's such great help. It just uh, just makes you appreciate what, uh, what you can do in a small town like this. And it, you don't have to go to the city to get what you need. You can get it all right here. Just knowing that we are helping people be healthier, I think that's, that's the greatest feedback of all. Thanks, Mike. I hope you all enjoyed that short clip um, hearing from peers, participants of the Delta program. Cohort 2019 um, just recently graduated the program last fall. And I do want to just highlight the fact that this particular cohort initially started um, during a unique time during the pandemic. So things had to be repositioned for the TA services that they received, but that the pandemic did not halter or hinder their success. So just wanna point that out. They, over, they had a lot of resilience with that cohort and they came out on top. So kudos to cohort 2019. For those of you that are connected to any of those organizations, reach out to them. So now I just wanna pause and talk about how to apply. So next steps, we hope that you have more insight about the program and are eager to submit an online application or willing to share 
about the program and how to submit an application. Suzanne highlighted this in the beginning, just want to just kind of walk through it again. So once we receive your application, we will host a 60 minute call to have a review call to finalize the process. And the purpose of this application review call is just to get to know more about your organization and give you an opportunity to ask some final questions. And then it helps to reduce the application um, process burden by allowing us to capture your comments. The information that we received during that call is documented, it's aggregated, and we do submit it to our partners, DRA and the Federal Office for final consideration in the selection process. So it is a collaborative effort. Next slide, please. Because of the significant amount of funding, we do expect our leaders to be ready to participate in all facets of the program to develop a local system of care and maximize the benefit for the organization. So I think this was clarified earlier, but this is not an a la carte program and that is at the benefit of the organizations. We really want to provide this comprehensive approach to where you guys could really benefit fully from all services. So to make sure that we are all on the same page, we do have an MOU. The board chair and the CEO are required to sign that MOU upon selection to the program. Executive leaders are expected to be fully engaged in all program activities and commit the necessary time for themselves as well as their management teams to be actively involved in consultations, community events, as well as the educational training. We do encourage you to watch additional videos to gain um, more understanding of how the program can assist you. And these are some of the videos that are highlighted. There will be a slide deck that is sent out following today's webinar, and you'll be able to just kind of click those hyperlinks to access those videos. So at this time, um, I just want to just summarize and just you know, say that the program does provide a comprehensive approach to patient-centered care, performance improvement, access to care, as well as system development and population health preparedness. We hope today's presentation has given you more insight about the program and even sparked some excitement to share the program with those that may not have been in attendance today, and you feel like this could be beneficial to their organization. At this time, uh, we're going to pause and stop sharing screens. I would like to kind of see faces if you have video capability and just hear from you all that if you have, what questions do you have that we can answer for you at this time? Hey, Selena. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, thank you for the presentation today. Um, I was curious, um, does the grant program team put together the cohort or do we need to pull the cohort together ourselves and then come to you? That would be a lot of work. That's a great question though. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. So we we will pull together the cohort. And again, so once we have those application review calls, we kind of make a recommendation to Suzanne at the federal office and DRA about the cohort members, then we select the cohort members. So the only thing you, your organization would have to do is to submit the application, participate in the review call and be on the lookout for the selection decision. That would be a lot of work though, if you guys had to do that, but no, that's, that's not a requirement. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for your question. So Stephanie has opened it up. Um, who else has questions? Can you tell me what the monetary value is to anyone that is participating? So there is about $250,000 of indirect technical assistance that's provided to our organizations per year. And then that does not include direct funding of $175,000 that goes to telehealth and financial system enhancements. 
and then about the 35,500 that's dedicated to the community champion hiring per year. So I don't have my calculator in front of me, but if you kind of want to summarize all it up, that's about roughly up to 400,000 between indirect, direct technical assistance. But if my numbers are off a little bit, you can flow with me here. Thank you. No problem. You're welcome. These are great questions. So what service areas are most intriguing to you? I see, you know, we have a few folks that are representing um, some state office. We have some health department people. So we, we do have a mixed bag here in the audience. So I know some of you aren't directly applying to the program, but you'll be taking this information back. So thinking about how you support your organizations through your different venues, what service areas are most intriguing to you? The rural areas for me, um, we, we deal a lot with those um, that are really struggling with doctors and with just services in general. Um, specialties, things like that. Okay. And I just see L. Buchanan. And can you share what organization you're with? Okay, I see you, Lisa Buchanan. Okay. I'm and with a company called Community Asset Builders. Um, I'm with a program called Healthran, uh, which is, I'm a mobility manager for them. So the more information I gather about health and what's going on, I can take those into the communities and give them the resources to help them with funding, things like that. So basically I'm a transportation provider, but <laughs> that's that. Uh, absolutely, is that in Missouri? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're familiar with Health Trans. Good, good, thank you. Yes, absolutely. So we, we do appreciate that. A lot of times we get inquiries from community-based organizations asking you know, about the application process, if the community-based organizations could apply. And while community-based organizations are not applicable to apply to the DOSA program, we do always suggest, hey, you would be the ideal community partner for our clinics, our FQHCs, our hospitals. So please pass this information along to them so that um, we can uh, you know, continue the outreach and conversation and um, follow up if they're interested. So it's all intertwined, it's, it's connected. So, you know, Lisa, we're making that point of, you know, being in the room to hear about different resources and passing that information along. It is, it's critical, it's important. Our healthcare organizations do need the support of their community-based organizations to work with this program. What other Delta program service areas that strike your attention or that are most intriguing to you? I'll talk hey, about oh. <laughs> No, go ahead, Mary, go ahead. Yeah, you're good. This is Mary with the Tennessee Hospital Association and this is great oh. information. Um, um, we do have uh, two or three critical access hospitals in the Delta region oh. and I'm excited to pass this information on to them because I mean, they just, I would just, echo what Lisa um, was saying. I mean, they're, I mean, they're struggling. It's always a struggle. Um, reimbursement rates are so low and it's, it's hard to, it's just hard to keep up. Um, so I'm excited to pass this information on and, um, and see what they have to say. I hope, hope they apply because we've got, we've got some great leaders in, uh, 
in West Tennessee and um, excited to see what this, what this holds for them. So thank you, appreciate the webinar. Thank you, Mary. We appreciate you. And we've had a few Tennessee, um, a little bit of Tennessee representation too here through the Delta program. Stephanie? I was just gonna share that um, there were several of the uh, program requirements uh, that kind of struck a chord, telemedicine, um, financial kind of overview of financial operations and help with that, always um, care coordination. There, there are a lot. So I, I kind of look forward to my um, interview with you guys and uh, uh, letting you, you decide where we need to go and what we need to do. I look forward to that. <laughs> so of course we want to let you know that we are your resource. There are a ton of things that we do in the Delta program, but the National Rural Health Resource Center, there are also other slew of things too that we offer and provide from knowledge to um, different training and other opportunities. So please take a look at our rebranded website. There's a lot of exciting things there for you. Next slide. And finally, this is our contact information, um, our phone number, as well as our email address if you have additional questions. And again, we thank you so much for your time today and we look forward to these to the applications rolling in. Or if you have any additional questions following today's webinars, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. You guys were awesome. Have a wonderful day, everyone. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Lisa. You too.